The first thing to remember whenever doing your own body repairs is to take your time and don't rush it. You want to make sure that all your materials have dried before you go on to the next step. In our case, we decided to leave our glazing putty dry overnight to make sure it was ready to sand. Why don't we go ahead and start, Randy? What uh, grit sandpaper are you using there? Well, Scott, we're going to use a 120 grit sandpaper with a hard rubber block. First, I'm going to put my mask on. Okay. Is there anything special we should remember when block sanding? Well, you want to go in a straight line fashion and continue to feel your body work like we talked about before to make sure that everything is leveled out. Okay. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good now. I'm going to feel it just to make sure that we're level and it feels pretty good. How about you, Scott? Yeah. So really all the glazing putty is used for now is to fill in the sanding scratches. Just the sanding scratches. You don't want to use it as a filler. Okay. And I think I'm going to blow this off now and then we'll run over it with the tack rag. All right. Again, that could be done at home with like a vacuum cleaner or something like that, too, if they didn't have air pressure. Yeah. Okay. And now we're ready for primer. One thing you want to make sure you do whenever you're using paint or primer is to shake your up good for a couple minutes before you start. Generally, once the ball rattles, about a minute or so will be fine. I think I got this one good enough, Randy. Okay, Scott, let's spray a little test panel first just to make sure that everything's working properly. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. Let's spray a coat on, and then we'll let it flash off, and we'll do another coat. All right. Whenever priming, make sure to use smooth, even strokes, periodically depressing the spray nozzle. Apply only thin coats each time. Once each coat of primer has set up tacky but appears dry, apply additional coats. Several thin coats are best to help fill any small sanding scratches or imperfections. Well, Scott, our, our primer looks pretty good. It looks like it's set up pretty good now. We're going to sand it with some 320 grit paper. Okay. What do you have inside the paper there? Well, I'm using a sponge inside of here. I'm using this as a pad so that we don't get any finger marks in, as we're sanding. We want to have some kind of a pad in between our work and our, and our hand as we're sanding. Okay. Let's get started. Now we're done sanding now. Feels pretty good. We got a nice edge feathered out here. I'm going to just finish tacking it off and we're ready for paint. Sounds good. But Scott, before we paint, we want to apply this chip protector, what I would call a gravel guard, to match the original equipment finish on the bottom of this door panel. Okay, so that's sort of the orange peel finish that you see on many late model vehicles down towards the bottom of the car. Right, and this is to prevent rock chipping to the finish. Okay, let's get started. I'd like to apply another coat here just so that we can match this factory finish a little bit better. Well, it looks like we got a pretty good repair going here. We have the proper texture now to match the original equipment finish, and I believe we're ready for paint. Okay. Do you have any extra tips that we can remember to use before painting? Well, make sure, Scott, that you shake the can vigorously, and when the ball breaks loose, that you shake for at least two or three minutes after that. Mm -hmm. And always shoot a test panel out before to make sure that the can's working properly. Okay. Let's go ahead. Lastly, Make sure you're wearing your dust mask whenever it comes around the painting. It 
looks like our can's working pretty good. Just as we demonstrated during priming, you'll obtain the best results by applying several thin coats of paint. Here, we're applying the second coat. Make sure when you're painting, spray several light coats. Hold the can about six to eight inches from the area that you're painting. Once each coat is dried, lightly wipe off the area with a tack cloth. This will remove any dust or dirt particles between coats. In our case, we chose to apply a fourth coat of paint as our final coat. Again, the number of coats of paint will vary with your specific repair, but most commonly, four coats will cover the area that you are repairing. Let's review minor rust repair. Wash thoroughly and tape off the area to be repaired. Remove the rust and paint from the area. Prepare the surface to hold the body filler. Apply body filler to the damaged area and sand to obtain a level surface. Mask off the area for primer painting and clean the surface of dust. Apply light coats of primer and sand until a smooth level surface is obtained. Clean the repaired area with a tack cloth. Apply the finish paint in several light coats. Wash thoroughly after the paint has dried at least 24 hours. The items you will need to color sand and buff your vehicle's paint include a bucket full of water, a sponge and clean soft towels, some masking tape, 1,000 to 2,000 grit sandpaper, coarse and fine rubbing compounds and final glaze, a drill and two buffing pads or a machine buffer, safety glasses or goggles, and a good wax. Okay. We finished our final coats of paint, and we've allowed the paint to dry for a couple days before final finishing. Randy, what's our first step here now? Well, Scott, what we'd like to do is take and color sand and rub out this area that we blended into to make the texture as smooth as the original finish. Okay, yeah, I noticed a little bit of roughness in our new paint, so we're going to match that to the old stuff now. Correct, and I've taken some masking tape again to mask off the moldings and the stripe up here to protect them so that we don't either sand on them or buff on them. Okay. Now you've got a little sanding block there, again, a sponge. Tell us again why you're using that. Well, I'm using a sponge again so that we don't get finger marks uh, okay. in our, as we're sanding. All right. And what grit of sandpaper will you be using? And we're using a 2,000 grit sandpaper. Okay, very, very fine sandpaper, so very minimal scratches as you're sanding. Correct. I notice you're also wet sanding then. We want to use a lot of water here as we're wet sanding. And what does the water do then? Cleans out the grid of the paper, and it also gives us a nice, smooth sanding surface. Okay. 